I tried just reviewing a couple of my games, mm -hmm. but I kind of just end up gaslighting myself into uh, uh, thinking that what I did was correct. Okay. <laughs> How so? Uh, <laughs> Do you blame remember. your teammates? Or what, what oh, is uh, the usual line of, of, of thinking that, that, uh, that occurs? Um, I probably farm too much and uh, like uh, assist lanes a bit too little. Um, I personally peaked around like season six or seven, and I played like very farm heavy jungles, jungle okay. champions, and I kind of just built what I feel like is a lot of bad habits of focusing too much on getting camps in uh, instead of um, like helping planers. Okay. And the main thing is always it's 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 important to not be stuck in too much in the frame of what your champion wants to do. Because sometimes deviating from that is what is going to give you the most odds in the game. Naturally, if, if you're playing Nocturne, it is going to be rare that you're looking for uh, level 3 gank as you cross. Uh, let's say you do, in this game, let's say you do three topside camps. Uh, it's Yasuo versus Irelia. There could maybe a, be a situation where, naturally, for efficiency's sake, you would just want to clear your camps. But maybe, maybe there's a situation where on the cannon that is coming, which is the timer where you are finished with your third camp, maybe there's an opportunity to deviate depending on what's going on in the game. Uh, in, in, in most cases, that's the wave, that's the cannon wave. Uh, both both laners are going to actively contest it. Uh, here I already saw that Relia is slow pushing wave 1, which means that she queued, and then she might overextend to, to, to look to crash the wave. And as a jungler, when you're doing three camps on one side and then crossing through, you are not spending that much time to, to, to create uh, that opportunity. Of course, if the enemy jungle is also strong and you run the risk of, of running into him, let's say in this game, uh, Evelyn, I didn't pay attention too much if she, she got leashed somewhere. Um, it looks like Ezreal Lamy didn't leash. It looks like Darius is leashing uh, for the Evelyn. So maybe we here we can safely assume that, uh, that Evelyn is starting topside. Evelyn is a jungler that won't interact. So you are creating a situation where even though Aurelia might be level three, uh, or might have a minion advantage, you could s create a situation where you, you are pressuring her on a very essential wave. So yes, here, I'm always confident in a, uh, in a 2v2 against Evelyn. She's kind yes, of useless yes. in the game. For sure. Like if she, it, it's very rare that Evelyn players are going to like do three camps topside and then go into mid. But uh, it's, it, it's very rare. So here, like uh, from, from your camera perspective, I think looking what's going on mid is, is, is quite important. Uh, just as you're doing your wolves, because maybe potentially you could kite your camps towards that area and, and win some seconds if, if that is the decision that you want to take. And then of course you would choose uh, to skill E if you want to clear camps, you just skill Q. But it looks like you pan over here, but already now you kind of made your decision about where you want to go. So you're panning over already when the decision is made, rather than before. Yeah? We continue. Okay, well, so do you mention a foreshadowing? <laughs> yeah, when I looked over it, it didn't look like much was going to happen, but then they just kind of decided to brawl. Yes, yes. It's always like when that, it's like here, it here it looks fine because it's, but it's this cannon wave that is going to be so volatile because both champions need to be on top of the wave because they're both melee in order to interact. And uh, there is going to be the situation that both players are going to contest for level 3 when the wave is even. Whoever gets level 3 first usually is going to be in a more dominant position and they can stack the wave and then potentially crash. Whoever gets level 3 first is going to decide now what happens in the lane phase. If Darius knows, okay, my Evelyn is going to bot side, Nocturne is going to top side, I ask Darius with the wave slow pushing into me, I'm just going to let it slow push, I'm not going to lose much and I'm going to accept it. But let's see if you punish his mistake. If a mistake even happens. Okay. Well, your timing is, 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 is perfect. You are right on time to... <laughs> are you going to queue it? Of course you're going to queue it. You have to queue it. <laughs> if I don't queue, he dies there. And uh, here, should I help him set up a freeze or just push it out? Because Darius doesn't have TP. Hmm. But I feel like he gets to lane first. So he would probably be able to push out. So Mordecai would have to base right away to, to somewhat uh, match him. But mm -hmm. the, 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 there's two schools of thought here. 
you you can push it because you're nocturne and the, the next wave is is coming is here already uh Darius is gonna catch maybe half of it uh the the main thing here is that mordecai will then be allowed to base with more gold if I'm Mordecai here, I'm going to base my decision off of if I get the gold of this wave and the next wave, how much is it going to improve my base? Because in the other way, where you don't push this and Mordecai just presses B here and he's going to be somewhat relatively on the same timer as Darius. Of course, Darius has home guard and uh, Mordecai is not going to be able to base right away because he's bleeding. So Darius is going to have a little bit of a tempo advantage to come into the wave, but uh, Darius will most likely be able to crash that freeze, but Mordecai is going to get a lot more experience. Mm -hmm. So the, the the question here is always, can Mordecai with these minions, maybe it changes his base, maybe he gets a ninja tabby base because of uh, the, the, the gold, uh, then it's uh, very good for him to push on, on the isolated topic that you are Nocturne. You pushing is also super, super nice because if you get to share this XP, it means that you're level 5 already after uh, clearing your camp number 8, after uh, you take the, the Crabben River. So, uh, these are the, the main things that you have to put into consideration when you make your decision, right? Mm -hmm. Here, in terms of what your plan is, just to, to once again establish your framework, what, what, what are the details that you are paying attention to and what you're thinking about? I'm thinking that I want to fully clear into top again. Okay. I like we can see a stacked wave for Marquez, but like he won't get to. I don't think. Don't know. He's one HP, so he might die here. Yeah, this is him misplaying the lane completely. Some people can't even save themselves, and uh, <laughs> getting fixated on saving those guys will will just be trouble. Because yeah, Mordekaiser just needs to legit when this wave is this big, Mordekaiser just needs to stand in XP range and and do nothing. But for some people, that is very difficult. And people get bored very easily. It yes, seems. Yes. Like when I get filled at the top lane, um, like I'm not, I'm fundamentally quite a bad laner, but I don't struggle in top lane too much just because people get bored too easily. They don't really play around waves at all. Mm. Yes, yes. Uh, he, here in this situation, I see that you're angling to go into, into river. Here is where I'm ca kind of surprised about this decision. Evelyn died, Ezreal died, Lucian, Pyka pushing. Well, what are you considering here? Do you remember? I guess I was considering Drake. Okay. Yeah, your top side is completely uh, uh, unleashed here. The Mordecai is dying on the stacked wave is very bad for him, and, and, and Yasuo died somehow on mid. But of course, you also know that the crab is is, is taken by Evelyn from before. So there's a, there's a window where... Okay. I'm checking if she's going to be greedy to push out and like, I don't know, try to take a bait or something, but she is smart enough to back up. Yeah, this this wave kind of crashes into tower. Yeah. Well, but I get a freebie. Even though this works, I, I think I, I think the line of, of decisions here was, was not the greatest. I wholeheartedly agree. So I think it was good that you looked bot. Because in the situation where Evelyn has no base and there's a potential 3v3 bot fight, uh, just because you spot Evelyn, I think it was good to look bot, very good. Uh, as you are crossing into mid, I think it's uh, always important to check what's going on here, because maybe with your advantage, you don't necessarily to need to kill your wolves. After you kill Gromp, maybe there's a situation where you can contest mid. You know already from before that uh, Yasuo has no flash, uh, it's melee versus melee, can be volatile, it's very important that you always pan over here. If Aurelia is slow pushing into, into Yasuo, it's an op opportunity. If the Yasuo is slow pushing into the Aurelia, it's also a reverse opportunity. So always, always when you're doing your camps on either side, in that process of pathing into top, always, always look at mid when it's a volatile matchup. Always, always. Because it is the easiest place to invest time as a jungler uh, because it's so efficient. If, if, if you're in a situation where you're doing your bot side camps and you're crossing uh, into top side, you lose very little time by, by doing so. And then in the process, of course, sometimes you pick up pink wards, you sweep, and then you cross into top side. This, this, this creates uh, an immense amount of pressure because the counterplay for it is, is, is very minimal. And even though you might sometimes reveal yourself, your pathing is quite telegraphed. So most players should be aware of your position regardless. 
even though but but even in this case right some players they see you and know where you are and still die to it like for example darius knew you got lesion bottom side you look for the kill you punish the mistake very good here really knows you bottom side you even cross a crab if i'm not mistaken and uh, you 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 get a kill as well but in theory here uh, if Aurelia wants to slow push this wave out, maybe there was a situation where if Yasuo played better, of course, you would be around mid when she wants to slow push out. You're way stronger than Evelyn because you have a level advantage and you have a Tiamat, and that could be gorgeous. Here in this spot, what goes through your mind? That I'm closing in on 6, but I also see Evelyn butt side, so we're going to see me invade top side. Lovely. Exactly what I was looking for. Does Evelyn decide to clear in the bot, gank bot twice, Die bot and then out of lane, go straight into bot. Psychopath behavior. You spotted the right thing right away, and that is to invade her uh, top side. Very good. Good deviation. Yeah, I feel like Evelyn at this point must have um, left already because she wasted so much time top lane. And I think that we can probably blow up Darius. Mm -hmm. But it turns out that Evelyn is continuing her psychopath playstyle. Yeah. I think in terms of the 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 risk the the risk assessment here I think is 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 correct. Right? It's it's like sometimes your decisions is going to mount up to percentages. It's like the moment you decide to go straight into top side and uh, do your uh, red in this sequencing then your decision to uh, to fight in top side also follows, follows along with it, right? Like you decide to go into topside here, so your intention is, oh, you spot Evelyn, you go into topside. Even even if you were going into bottom side, going into topside to to do your red and potentially defend this, isn't uh, that crazy? Like this is a perfectly fine decision. And then coming down to like the risk assessment here, assuming that Evelyn uh, potentially based, I think isn't isn't crazy at all. Sometimes some decisions are going to be wrong uh, because it becomes a little bit of a, like a like a poker game, right? Yeah. 